the Chargers, LaDainian Tomlinson and his San Diego teammates. They've heard the talk all week. They're too hurt or they're not good enough to beat New England. But Tom Brady and the Patriots have never looked beyond one game. They say their season will be special only if they are able to orchestrate two more wins. The AFC Championship game is next on CBS. Undefeated Patriots take the field for the AFC Championship game. About to battle the Chargers, winners of eight straight. The winner to advance to Arizona and Super Bowl 42. We're there. They'll tangle with the NFC champions. That will be decided tonight in Green Bay. Hello, friends. Jim Nance and Phil Simms. It's cold. It's gusty. It's always exciting on Championship Sunday. Yeah, it is. It's emotional, too, Jim. Last night, we were talking to LaDainian Tomlinson, and you said to him, one game till the Super Bowl. He was so emotional about it, his eyes started welling up. Yeah, they really did. Now, Phillip Rivers is going to try to go here today. This has, of course, been a big question all week long. You watched his warm-up. What did you see? Well, I thought he warmed up very slow at first. Kind of afraid to test that knee. But as it went along, he got much, much better. Norv Turner talked to him, and I think really fired him up a little bit and Philip Rivers what he's got to know today you're not 100 percent adjust to that and play accordingly they had all these questions about injuries during the week but they're all going to try to play that includes Gates Tomlinson and Jamal Williams now on the New England side Tom Brady and this season of all seasons surrounded though by so many playmakers well Tom Brady is a terrific quarterback we all uh, all know that but if you want to be great surround him with talent Randy Moss the big plays on the outside that's opened up a lot of plays for Wes Welker, who set a team record with receptions. Speed at the wide receiver position on the other side and Dante Stallworth. And then Lawrence Maroney really sets it apart with the ability to make big plays when you hand it off to him in the backfield. All right, partner. San Diego and New England is coming up. Experience the NFL playoffs on CBS. Brought to you in high definition by Sony. The AFC Championship game. It's San Diego and New England. Just seconds away. It is cold. In fact, the wind chills are going to be somewhere around zero by halftime. What do you make of this, and how will it impact the game? Well, I, th I don't think the temperature is a big deal, Jim. Just watching the punters, kickers, quarterbacks, they dealt with the wind pretty well in, in warm-ups, and actually I think it's died down quite a bit from the way it was about an hour ago. 
All right, let's go down to the field and work in the sideline. Steve Tasker, Steve. Well, during the pregame warm-ups, it seemed the wind was pushing the ball. When it got high in the air, it really pushed it all over the place. Whichever team's forced to put the ball up in the air, it's really going to be a gamble because you don't know where it's going to come down. Thank you, Steve. And we'll be seeing New England and Steve Gostowski kicking to Darren Sproles, a dangerous return man. Gostowski, fourth best in the league, drawing touchbacks. And this is a downwind kick. Sproles, who knows how to run him back, takes it from a yard out. Got a little seam, but is brought down at the 25. And yes, indeed, Philip Rivers is coming out. We were just holding our breath for a minute there. They said he's going to play, but they never used the words he's going to start. He is, in fact, starting here with that tender right knee. Injured on a touchdown throw last week against Indianapolis. Had been listed as doubtful. Had practiced on Friday, took about 15 snaps, rode a bike this morning to try to loosen things up. And he's going to give it a try. They'll come out with two tight ends, and they come out with a little handoff up the middle with Tomlinson picking up about three. Rivers has had a hot stretch since this team caught fire midseason, winning eight straight. There you see a fine performance last week by Phillip, pulling the upset over the Colts. His line has been healthy all week. They must make sure they can somehow prevent New England from laying a hand on Rivers today. Tomlinson led the league in rushing. Another title for last year's MVP as this game pits last year's league MVP Tomlinson against this year's MVP Brady. On second and seven again, same play. It's Tomlinson for just a couple. Now the New England defense, second best in the league, sacking the quarterback. Second only to the Giants. Warren Wilford Seymour. Can't get much better than that up front. All that experience with that collection of linebackers, including the former Charger, Junior Seau, and Rodney Harrison, the former San Diego star in his decorated career, also back there going against his old team. Tomlinson out, scrolls in, three receivers, Buster Davis, the extra one on third and five. First chance to see how Rivers braces that right foot on a throw. With time, goes underneath and scrolls, the pass was low. Seau was closing in on him, and it's an opening three and out for San Diego. It was, Jim. You know, just talking to Norv Turner this uh, yesterday, talking about how they wanted to play offense today, be more conservative, run the football more. I think he would have been that way even if Phillip Rivers was 100%. That is Wes Welker back to return the punt. Cyphers, one of the best. Low snap. Heavy pressure. That was Seymour coming close. There is a flag that did hit the punter. And the run back only out to the 50 is immaterial as Seymour and Jarvis Green moved in on him. It's going to be a five yard infraction. That's what it's going to be, Jim. Running into the punter. It will not be a first down. I think North Turner will punt again to try to get a better punt. It was fourth and a little more than five to go. Jeff Triplett. Turning into the kicker, number 97 for the receiving team. It's a five yard penalty. It'll still be fourth down. Jim, you said it, Jarvis Green. Very close. It looks like for a second. That he might actually, that was Richard Seymour that, I, that ran into the punter and goes into him. Jarvis Green to the side. Well, that first punt, just to give you an idea, again, the wind, the gust netted only about 22 yards and uh, about a half yard shy of the first. The Chargers, when they warmed up before the game, they never did anything going into the wind, which I thought was a mistake. Punt and throw passes into the wind to get a gauge on how well you can execute against it. Good point. Everything they were doing is the opposite direction of what they're doing in this quarter. This time, it merits a fair catch. Welker secures at the 27. Beautiful 40-yard punt into the breeze. Here comes Tom Brady. Pulled off the quarterback triple crown this year. 
led the league, best rating, most yards, most touchdowns, an all-time record. His line with Light and Mankins and Copen, all pro bowlers. Neil, what a game he had last week. Casher as well. Then you got Welker, the leading receiver in the league this year with 112 catches. He began his NFL career as a rookie free agent signee by San Diego. They spread him out with four wides on their first snap. That penalty, by the way, netted about 22 more yards for the Chargers down the field and over the head of Kyle Brady. Now the defense under the direction of defensive coordinator Ted Cottrell led the league this year in takeaways. Phillips and Merriman, what will they be able to do on the edges? Such a big part of this game, and we'll see many times today the nickel package. Cromartie led the league this year in picks. We'll see a lot of Drayton Florence in there as well. Maroney the single back now on second down and ten. And it's only about a two-yard gain, and look what's happening already with San Diego. We've been talking about these players questionable, including Antonio Gates, who was wearing a boot all week, and he's already heading into the locker room. Well, something must have happened where his his toe did not feel as good as he had hoped once the action started and you're right Jim he wore a boot all week long even yesterday when they were walking through plays he kept it on didn't test his toe until today during the month. in San Diego match uh, defensively here the New England defense and force a three and out so it's a third and eight Gaffney coming into a slot on the left side and they got a little hit on Brady who's able to yeah. throw it away so there was pressure by Stephen Cooper and the Patriots who so often take it right down the field and score on a first possession yep three plays and a punt on the way Jim I saw this last week the San Diego Chargers when they want to they can cover guys down the field to the left side we saw a receiver Dante Stallworth make a double move he was open Randy Moss well covered they did not play this Patriots offense like this in week two. They got off, they played safe, and they got picked apart. Brady already has as many incompletions, too, as he did all of last week against Jacksonville. Sproles touched it, but as he was racing toward the sidelines, and it harmlessly goes out of bounds. That was Hanson's punt, and Rivers ready to go for a second time in a moment. Under that jacket, number 21, Tomlinson will not come out for the second series. He too with a tender knee. He told us he was about 90%. So it's Michael Turner taking the second possession here. Backfield position and Rivers. First down throw and it's a beauty. Chris Chambers with the catch for a first down at the 44. 20 yards. You said it right, Jim. It is a beauty. Something the Chargers do a lot of. They like to throw the football down the field. Nice head fake by Chris Chambers. He looked inside. It lets the defensive back. It lets them go inside. And at the last second, he breaks out. Perfect throw by Phillip Rivers. Manu Maliuna in for Gates, who has just run back out from the locker room. And it's Turner with a carry out to the 49-yard line. And that picks up five. So a couple of good snaps here for San Diego. 11-5 and five after a 5-5 five and five start. And they defeated Tennessee after being blanked in the first half at home in that wild card game. Then they won it in Indianapolis. So they've actually been behind in the second half of both of these playoff games. Coming back to win. And there's Gates, anxious to get back out there. Second down and five. And Sproles was over there looking for it. But they go to Chambers instead for another first down into New England territory. You know, Jim, I think it's important to tell everybody all you heard all week long. No chance for the San Diego Chargers against the perfect team, the injuries. But we talked to North Turner to the players, and the confidence was sky high. And, and North Turner says, we are not a big underdog. We have the personnel that matches up and is every bit as good as New England's. They move Jeremy Clary over to the left side of that line. And on first down, play action again. Rivers able to plant and throw, and it's batted down by Samuel. 
They were going for Vincent Jackson. That's case in point. Our wide receivers bigger than any defensive back you got. And Phillip Rivers, nice protection up front. Look at the space. And because Vincent Jackson is six foot five, he throws it high, hopes he can go up and get it. But good coverage, that is not a penalty. You can put your arm on the wide receiver as long as you don't turn him. Good job by Asante Samuel. On second down and 10, Gates is back in. Lined up just off the right side in a slot. So too is Tomlinson back into the game. They toss it to LT. He's bounced out by Bruski. Now the Chargers send word that Gates jogged to the locker room because he had an equipment issue. So it was not a re-aggravation on that first series of the dislocated toe. Well, you're sitting here. We're watching the game, Jim. Look at Phillip Rivers. He's already got confidence moving around. We saw none of this during warm-ups. I know he was saving it for the game. But second series, it's like, all right, I feel good after the first one. My knee doesn't hurt as much as I thought it would. And it's changed the way he's played already. Never missed a game in his career, Phil, to injury. He faces third and nine. Harrison in on him, and the pass is incomplete. All caused by the pressure of Rodney Harrison. Rodney Harrison is turned into an exceptional blitzer. Knows how to time up the snap count of the opposing quarterback. Number 37 on the outs. Oh, what a move. On a, LT. A spin move, just like a Dwight Freeney or a good defensive end would make. And LaDainian Tomlinson completely misses him. Got Kevin Falk now. Back inside the 10. And Cyphers, who is a real specialist. And down at him inside the 20. And Falk has it. At the 10, 31 yards. That's just what the Chargers were looking for. Now Brady comes back out for the second time. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines, you are now free to be more productive. Visit Southwest.com. McDonald's, score something good for breakfast. Try the new McSkillet burrito only at McDonald's. And by Bud Light, endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. Back here in the first quarter in Foxborough, Jim Nance and Phil Sims, Chargers and Patriots, second series for New England. Tom Brady, 7-0 in his postseason career at home. And the double tight end formation of Brady shifting over there. Kyle Brady, the go Maloney, and a hit behind the line of scrimmage by Marlon McCree for a loss of one. Get a little philosophy here from you, Mr. Sims, about the Patriots. All right, Jim, when the Patriots have the ball, what they got to do on offense is make sure a big offensive lineman is always on Sean Merriman. Don't let him ruin your passing game for the San Diego defense. When they play zone, make sure what they've been really good at, keeping their eyes on the quarterback. So if the football's tipped or goes in the air, they're able to react and get turnovers, which they have been terrific at. Here in the second half of the year. Second and 11. And with Falk shifting over, five wides. And it's Welker. Has the first down at the 21. Eric Weddle defending. It goes for 12. Anytime Wes Welker in the slot coming down the field. Look at that move on a linebacker, Stephen Cooper. There's no chance you can stay with him. Tom Brady, he knows the safeties are deep. When he sees safeties deep, he knows Wes Welker has space underneath, and he locks in on him, and it doesn't even take a great throw because he's usually wide open. So the first first down for New England puts it just across the 20. Staying up top, and some more pressure on the quarterback and the throw, and there is a flag. There is a flag right in the area of where Welker was perhaps the re intended receiver, plus Stallworth was over in that range too. There were a lot of people in that area. New England trying to go deep. Illegal contact. Number 23, the defense. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. Quinn Jammer, one of his strengths. He's strong, likes to be physical at the line of scrimmage, and just keeps his hands. Look at that, two of them running together. Wes Welker. And Dante Stallworth. That is. 
Quinn Jammer doesn't want to run with you down the field. When he's up close, beat him up. Ruin the pattern right away. Another first down, this time at the 26. And it's Maroney. There's a lot of traffic, no gain. Now these two met, these teams met, second week of the season. And uh, it was such a quick start there by the Patriots. Uh, they picked up Rivers on his first throw. They were up big on him. Went on to cruise to a 38-14 win. And there were all kinds of communication issues for the San Diego defense as they were adapting to a new coaching staff. They were, Jim. There were players wide open. And basically, just the easy way to put it, the defense was a mess. But they have straightened it out, and they've played, we've said it many times, a lot better here in the second half. Throw over to Watson. He's banged out by Clinton Hart and Stephen Cooper. You know, early in the year, the San Diego defense given up a lot of big plays. They haven't done that of late. That, of course, when you don't give up those big, long scoring passes or runs, it, it's just going to change everything. They're strong up front, and already you can tell, even when they want to play coverage, their defensive line, there's Ted Cottrell, defensive coordinator, their defensive line strong enough to stop the run without blitzing. It's a third and one. And still, we'll spread it out. The fault for the running back. Here comes pressure, pass, incomplete. That's Wilhelm coming in on welcome. Wilhelm, by the way, in that first meeting this year, was injured in the pregame warm-ups with a calf injury. That also that threw, hurt him. Him, threw him out off balance. Watch the blitz. Here it comes. Again, blitzing is about timing and spacing, and it caught the Patriots off guard. Nobody there to block Matt Wilhelm, Will and it makes Tom Brady throw it off target. So Stephen Cooper making some plays as well. He's a New England kid who came out of Maine. So back out is Hanson. And for the second time, the Sproles will have a chance to run it. Waits for things to unfold and brings it near the 40. Wrapped up at that point by Eric Alexander. 39-yard punt, 12-yard run back. We're scoreless, first quarter. Rams owner Georgia Frontieri. Tomlinson remains on the sideline to start this, the third drive of the game for the Chargers. Michael Turner lined up behind Rivers and he'll get the handle. And he breaks a tackle. And look at him. Steamroll for a first down into New England territory. Goes for 12. He broke away from both Wilfork and Harrison. So Turner coming in and just fighting for it. Tomlinson telling us in his meeting with us last night about how valuable, how much he appreciates a guy like Turner. Giving him a chance to finish strong in a lot of games. Talking about Tomlinson. And they'll go back to uh, Turner for four more. Brought down by Harrison. Well, guys that have really stepped up in this postseason for the San Diego Chargers. Chris Chambers adding to that duel of LaDainia Tomlinson and Antonio Gates. Vincent Jackson has been terrific. Michael Turner. Jim, when he's in there, he's a straight-ahead runner. It's the defensive line and the inside linebackers. That's the key. Bill Belichick said when he, Michael Turner's in, it's inside running. He called him a downhill runner. Rivers is going to throw, and it's over the head of Vincent Jackson. So they've had the battle of uh, field position. Talking about the Chargers here in this first quarter, and they've been going into a breeze. It has quieted here in terms of the gusts. It was pretty significant about three hours ago when we had first saw some of the special teamers out warming up. The third and seven on the way. Well, that's looking pretty significant right now. Gates is on the field. You saw last second little chat with his quarterback. He hasn't been thrown to so far. They bring pressure. Rivers in trouble. Seau has him. There is a flag. It'll be against San Diego, but Junior Seau comes in to get the quarterback. Owning number 73 of the offense, 
One thing this New England defense can do, they can push the pocket. And on the outside, Adelis Thomas gets around Marcus McNeil, puts the pressure on Junior Seau, gets the sack. But you also, that's where Phillip Rivers, that right knee is going to hurt him when he's going to try to hop around the pocket much tougher today. Junior telling us he could not even put in the words what this game means to him. Still considers, of course, San Diego his hometown. He has his home there, but his hometown team. And that Cypher's punt, bouncing at the three, and as good as Osgood is covering those, he couldn't get there in time. No chance on that one. Only a net of 29 yards. Back to the Patriots. First quarter, no score. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. And by Sprint. Proud sponsors and avid fans of the NFL. Well, combined five possessions, five punts here in Foxborough as New England starts this series from the 20. It's a fake to Maroney. And this pass picked. You can see it all the way. Jammer has the interception. Did the ball come out at the end? No, that's San Diego ball. That's the first time in Tom Brady's career he's been picked off in a postseason game in the first quarter. Well, Tom Brady throws this. Again, it's tough coverage on the outside. Something that San Diego didn't show the first time these two teams met. And when he throws the football, he thinks Quentin Jammer is not going to see it. So he throws a line drive, trying to let Dante Stallworth adjust and not worry about Quentin Jammer. And look at the quick turn, the nice job of going up in the air and catching the football. Not only the first time in the first quarter of a playoff game, first time in the first quarter this year that Brady's been intercepted. Flags everywhere, looks like a face mask as Turner picked up five, even with the reach in. I got to say this, every Charger yesterday said, we will get turnovers they were they were convinced personal foul face mask number 75 of the defense 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run first down Michael Turner going inside Vince Wilford grabs the face mask doesn't let go quick enough that makes it a personal foul but North Turner talks about this Charger defense he said they have the best ball skills of any group I've ever seen on the defensive side. And that's why they led the league in takeaways. Turner again, getting to the outside and racing right down the line with him, the likes of Ellis Hobbs and Adelius Thomas. Picks up a yard, that's it. But they've moved it into the red zone. Speaking of San Diego, and they've had fractionally the better of it this quarter, and then they come up with a pick. Well, you know, two things, Jim. The defense is playing better, no question, against this... New England offense and Phillip Rivers. They've got to, it's got to give them confidence knowing that now they believe he can go out there and execute more plays than they probably originally thought. It's a second and nine. Rivers looks left, stays locked in on that side and throws. Nice catch. Chambers with the grab. They give him the catch. And that's at the nine yard line. Hobbs was working on him. Yeah, it's a nice catch to the outside. Phillip Rivers looks out here about four different times. And finally, nice job by Chris Chambers coming back and fighting for the football. That'll give your quarterback some confidence. Look at him just making double sure that he's got both feet in. Sweeps the left foot and then still tries to tiptoe it just in case. But he has it. First and goal to go. To Turner. Work in the middle. Seymour and Warren. Collide with them, give them one yard. Now San Diego has scored its last 32 times into the red zone, and they're now at the eight, with three and a half to go in the first. Patriots defense, what has made it one of the better defenses in the NFL this year is their ability to hold teams to field goals once they get inside the 10-yard line. They know how to adjust, don't they? Teams drive on them down the field. That last stretch, they make it difficult. Second and goal over to Neal, who had to turn around too late. 
Harrison was out there in the flat with him. Third and goal on the way. You know, Jim, nobody open as Phillip Rivers drops back to pass. And again, Phillip Rivers just looking more comfortable as the game goes along. Even if he catches it, nowhere to go. And just the, the perfect phrase talking about this New England defense, people moving on them. And Norv Turner says what they do is they minimize the damage. So Tomlinson remains out. He had said 90%, but obviously it's been a difficult early start here for him. And he's on that sideline. Third and goal. Sproles is the running back. Rivers looking end zone. Still looking, waiting, throwing back of the end zone. And it's ruled incomplete. They say he did not have the feet down. I don't know how he caught it. Chambers. They may want to look at this one. Hey, a couple things. Tough to throw it in the end zone with so many defenders looking. Well, he's already out of bounds. Yeah. Oh, he's definitely out of bounds. But the pass protection was fantastic for for Rivers that time gave him gave him about a two extra seconds to at least get a chance to throw it to Chris Chambers for the first points of this game Kading 26 yard field goal attempt Cypher's on the hold and the kick it wasn't pretty but it was good in through the right side off the Brady interception it adds up to three three nothing Chargers first quarter Three nothing San Diego and Nate Kading will be kicking here. It's usually in well in just the last few weeks Dave Rayner but he, they set him down. He's inactive uh, Phil that I'm sure has to do with just trying to make sure they can get one of the stars a chance to dress him today and see what he could do. Absolutely no question to give Antonio Gates LaDainian Tomlinson every opportunity to contribute to what's going on. Lawrence Baroni is awaiting the kick. He was oh. second last year. In the league and kick returns. That's a short one, a little confusion. Willie Andrews, though, holds on to it. And that's only out to the 35. Well, it's a whole new game of Survivor. Super fans take on all time favorites in an intense competition like never before. Survivor fans versus favorites. It premieres Thursday, February 7th, only on CBS, America's number one network. Jamal Williams uh, was out there and then walks to the sideline, replaced by Jacques Cesaire. Brady again, most of the time, shotgun. No different on this one. Throws it to Walker underneath, and he's got nine yards. So this is the best field position for the Patriots in this first quarter. Had some pressure on Brady in this uh, early going. Yeah, this is a big physical defense. And they can go after the football. It does not resemble what the Patriots saw in week two. And the Patriots changing their offense a little, going to four wide receivers. Second and one coming over to the sideline and over the head. Randy Moss, first time they've thrown the Moss. He, remember last week, Jacksonville locked on, locked in on Moss so much he only had the ball thrown at him once, one catch and now so, in the last five quarters. Yeah, the Patriots don't care. If you want to double cover him, they got a lot of other weapons. And I asked Tom Brady, I said, you threw it to Randy Moss for one completion. Did he complain? He said he never said a word. Not a bit. He said Heath Evans, second effort, able to crash through and pick up three. Ran behind Logan Mankins. Yeah, third down. You got to find a different way. This time, Heath Evans, good blocking up front. Matt Light does a good job, allows Evans to give a little second effort and pick up the first down. That left side of that line, heavily recognized with postseason honors. First down and 10, 47 yard line. Showing signs of reverse. It's Moss. And he breaks away. They had it red. Merriman finally slings him down, but the Patriots advance the football for the first time in the San Diego territory. 14 yards. Yeah, reverse last week. Not a good idea. But today you're playing against the defense. It's playing you hard. You contain it to the outside, but nobody pursues from across the field. 
it allows Randy Moss to pick up the first down. The 14 yard gain, the longest so far today by New England. He got away from Jock Cesare, who had a what looked like a good shot at him at first. From the 39, quick toss over to Falk. Phillips, he breaks free from him, and it's another first. So now New England picking up a little rhythm. That goes for another 14. Yeah, you said it right. Rhythm, just a just a fast array of ways to get it done. That's just an outside sweep. They put Kevin Falk in motion. They throw it out there to him quick. The wide receivers. Excellent job of blocking downfield. And again, another first down. Philip Rivers and just relaxing a bit as Brady and the Patriots the last three plays each going for a first down. Back over to Falk again for Marty bounces him out 21 seconds to go in the quarter. Give him four yards. And take CBS Sports with you wherever you go with live scores and stats and even manage your fantasy team by texting score at 99888 or go to mobile.cbsports.com. Bill Belichick who watched San Diego's win over Indianapolis last week while running on a treadmill and had a hunch it might be the Chargers. He started preparing last Sunday morning for San Diego he told us. Brady on the last play of the quarter goes to Stallworth. And another five. The third and short to start the second. Three nothing Chargers. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We're starting the second quarter here, and now New England will be going into the win in the second quarter, along with Bill Sims, Jim Nance, at this AFC Championship game. Now you saw the Chargers did a good job going into the win in the first half. Of course, the three points are in the first quarter. They can't, came off of Tom Brady's interception, but what they did, they kept field position. They kept New England backed up and was going to at least make them drive the length of the field. Mike Vrabel is in for New England on third and one. And he's shifting over to that right side. Yeah, they've gone into a goal line offense out here on the 15 yard line. And a run for it. Maroney. Bounces outside and has the first. And plenty of room to spare. Heath Evans helping block that left side. Goes for seven. Lawrence Maroney, good job. Nice blocking up front. Heath Evans seals it to the outside. And Lawrence Maroney waits to see where the block and takes him. It said go outside, so he does. Nice job of blocking. Good job by Lawrence Maroney waiting and running. And that block was on Sean Merriman. During the postseason, this is where the Chargers have really locked down. Teams inside the 20, the opposition have given up only one touchdown in six trips. On a first and goal, Brady has plenty of time here, and Fox about a yard short. That's Eric Weddle, the rookie from Utah, who holds on to keep him a yard out. Yeah, what they do, Jim, I saw it when you watch them practice on Friday, we did. They run about 50 plays from inside the 10 yard line. Many ways to get it done. They spread the field. And Kevin Falk, he has the best matchup. Nice reach behind and catch. And I said it last week. When you throw it as much as they do, you get good, you get good at making tough catches. It's Baroni diving and he is in. Touchdown, New England. Again, he followed Heath Evans. Hard to call this Patriots team a finesse team, even though they throw it so much. When they want to, they can line up and say, we're going to run it right at you and get it done. And that time they did. And Gostowski out for the extra point try. And it's 7-3 New England. The Patriots offense awoke on its fourth drive of the game. Maroney takes it the final yard, 7-3, Patriots. That's a 10-play drive. They had five first downs on the drive after managing only a pair of 
first downs the first three series. Gustowski now will give it a try into the wind. And it's a good one. Sproles wasn't anticipating he'd get that much of it. So goes to the middle, has room. And Gustowski jumps in there along with Larry Izzo. Kyle Eckel. And LT remains on the sideline. We'll get the report on that when we come back. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Diet Dr. Pepper. Treat yourself to the rich, decadent taste. There's nothing diet about it. The United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. And by Miller Lite. Preserve the liquid sanctity of game day. Miller Lite, good call. San Diego starting from the 30. We thought coming into the game that LT would be playing. Rivers was highly questionable or doubtful, but Rivers has gone all the way to this point while well, LT has been out now for the last two series and the start of this one. Rivers, good pass on target. Vincent Jackson for 15. And let's go down to Steve Tasker with the LT story. Well, you're, as you said, Jim, LT has not been on the football field for the last two offensive series. We asked their people, the word we're getting is that LT has not re-injured himself. It is a coach's decision. So it looks like for the time being, this is going to be Michael Turner's game. You talked to LT, Phil, about last week on the sideline. You could see in his eyes a look of fear, not knowing what exactly was the depth of the injury. On first down play action. Rivers taking advantage of the win on that first throw and has another completion again jumping up like he did last week to snatch it. Vincent Jackson he had a couple of catches like that against the Colts. This one for 17. Well he has really emerged and it's changed this offense. Phillip Rivers wide open Vincent Jackson is comes all the way across the field. And a good job by Phillip Rivers moving out of the pocket and making that throw. North Turner said there are a lot of spaces to throw the football against this New England defense. We've seen a few of them the last few plays. It's Turner cradling the ball with both arms and running into Bruski for four. You know, Jim, to go back to what you said about LaDainian Tomlinson, I said, yeah, I could see the look on your face during that game. And he goes, yes, I've never really been hurt, especially my legs, my knees. So I was uncertain. I didn't know what was wrong, but he got the MRI on Monday and realized and found out there's it's nothing bad. I guess that's the best thing to say. Just a strain MCL. First time he's ever hurt a knee in his life. He's wearing a sleeve today, not a brace, and he thought that that would compress things enough for him to be able to go most of the way. Rivers with Bruski now riding down Turner, down a yard shy of the first, and Rivers hopping around, bouncing around, uh, even with that uh, tender knee. It's unbelievable. When we met him yesterday, we were in the car driving back, and I said, "There's no way." <laughs> you were. You said, "You know, he's not playing. He's not playing. I'm There's not no playing. Way. He's not playing." He's limping around the hotel, he couldn't even walk in the room where we were. Then he tripped over my briefcase. Yeah, how about that? I mean, <laughs> you were here. You are maybe influencing history. Oh man! Phil leaves his big briefcase right out. Phil walks over to Philip. Walks over to shake your hand. Trips right over it. No harm though. No harm, no foul. Third down and looking down the field, and they've got the catch. It's a Vincent Jackson reception again at the nine. That's for 21. This San Diego team, and they throw the football. It's not about throwing it five yards. Thrown in the flat, trying to get a couple. It's about down the field. Again, Vincent Jackson, nice little move. Head fake to the outside, and his size in a very good throw by Phillip Rivers. Gets him another first down. Quite a series for Jackson. Unbalanced line to the left. And a first and goal, that's Turner twisting for a yard. Now this Phillip Rivers, though, in his toughness. Norv Turner delivering a testimonial to us yesterday about this kid and saying he is about as tough as I've ever been around. Yeah, he got hurt this year against the Tennessee Titans. They said there's no way he'll play next week. And the week goes along and they all realize, well, he's going to get himself ready and get it done. That's why, Jim, all that, that's why they didn't count him out this week. He says, uh, and then he gets something in his mind. This is uh, the coach talking about him. He doesn't let go of it. He's going to get it done. And he's out here now, facing second and goal. Great protection. Now he has to come out of it. Looking, throwing, and 
knocked down. What a play by Bruski. There was Antonio Gates getting a ball thrown in his direction. The twos, you look down the field. New England playing pass coverage. Nobody open. They are going to double Antonio Gates. So Phillip Rivers didn't have anywhere to throw. And they doubled Vincent Jackson top of the screen. When he moves, it almost gives Antonio Gates a chance to open up. They've been in this position once before in this game. And it, again, nothing more than a field goal materialized. They got another third and goal from about the eight. And they take a timeout with 10 minutes to go in the half. And the Chargers come out of the timeout for third and goal. Again, they've already bogged down once inside the 10. Gates not 100%. Tomlinson on the sideline. Manu Maliuna flanks the quarterback on the left side. Sproles on the right. South Seau signaling a pair of defenders. Harrison and Hobbs and Rivers. Goes underneath. Chambers want a tackle. That's Ellis Hobbs. Grable forced Rivers to step up in the pocket. And again, they'll have to bring out Kading. Yeah, you watch the pass defense. If you're the quarterback, where are you going to throw it? Really, initially, nobody open, but a nice move in the back of the end zone by Vincent Jackson. But Phillip Rivers moves nowhere. Had to move up. That took his eyes off of looking down the field. Throws it short. Good tackle. And Vrabel got a clean shot on that right leg, lower right leg of Phillip Rivers. This will be 23 yards. Kading already connecting from 26. And this one dead center. Two red zone trips, two field goals. 7 6 New England and the AFC title game. The NFL on CBS, sponsored by Sony High Definition. It's in Sony's DNA. And by the Acura TL, advancing possibilities. So the first time the Chargers have the football, downwind. They drive down the field, thanks in a large part to some efforts by Vincent Jackson, three catches, but still end up settling for a short cating field goal. The wind has definitely died down, Jim, so I don't think it's near the factor it was. And that was the forecast that as the game went along, they expected it to be less and less. And we were out here in practice on Friday. It was blowing 25 miles an hour. It was awful. And of course, the Patriots, they practice in it every day. They did a good job. Uh, executing with the win that day. And a few flurries uh, floating yeah. about. Brady drove him down the field for a touchdown the last time they had it. Now Maroney was the deep man last time. The kick was so short it came to Willie Andrews. Now it's Ellis Hobbs. Short. Very short. Hobbs up to the 16 to field it. Gets a little room to work with, and it's a good run back. Jim, let me just show you on the last play why the Patriots, uh, the Chargers don't get a touchdown. Here's Vincent Jackson's going to go inside, inside and go across the field, and then Mike Frabel doesn't get pressure on Phillip Rivers. Of back in the end zone, wide open for the touchdown, but when you get pressure on the quarterback, it changes where they're going to look. So when he felt it, he stepped up, he changed, he looked for the short receiver, and that prevented the Chargers from getting a touchdown. Best starting position here for New England at the 40 after the 24-yard return by Hobbs. Evans is at the top of the screen. Falk wide left, and he is Brady's target. So Marty bounces him out, but it's a first down for New England and quickly back into San Diego's territory. We saw it last week against Jacksonville. That play illustrates it all. If you drop back and go, okay, we're not going to give up the big play, the New England Patriots will pick you apart, march down the field, and then you just hope to get lucky to tip a ball where they get a penalty or where they miss a field goal if they do hold it. After the 13-yard play to fall, first down, San Diego 47. It's Maroney. And Maroney on that right.
right side for about five. February 10th, the NFL's best, including Tom Brady, Randy Moss, Sean Merriman, LT, Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, all among those expected at the Pro Bowl. Presented by State Farm, live from Honolulu. Check your local listings. Rooney with the game's touchdown. He certainly has been something else since really the first of December. Going with four wides on second and five. And it's Walker. That ball was uh, really in traffic. He was surrounded by a couple of chargers, including Giles Tucker, the rookie linebacker. Well, this offense now, uh, Tick of that last drive had an interesting look. You know, Jim, I've said it, they got a lot of talent, but what they do, they give you such an array of plays to try to defend formations, and they have the power to run it at you, too. But you can do this when you have extended long practices and you got players that can play multiple roles. That's how the Patriots have so many plays on offense. It's third and three, and he guns it, knocked out beautifully. Going for Moss, and that's Quentin Jammer who had the pick in the first quarter, making the play to take the Patriot offense off the field. Yeah. Moss without a catch in this game. Top of your screen, and again, pressure defense. So far, it's worked almost every play for the San Diego Chargers. And that was that drive. They gave up an easy completion. Then they put the pressure on them, and it gets them off the field. That's a big stop by that San Diego defense, and Jammer with a couple of gems already. Now can Hansen pull off a little pooch punch? This one. Kelly Washington bats it back into the field. What a play. Their fifth receiver. Just like a volleyball player taps it back across the net and it's a 36 yard punt down at the four. You've said it many times this year. Kelly Washington makes his present felt a lot on special teams. Has to be disappointed he's not catching passes, but it hasn't affected his play doing things like that. I'll tell you on the other side, because Sim Odds good is as yep. good as there is at that kind of play. But we saw Kelly Washington with a block punt earlier this year. In fact, that was in December against the Jets. And now backing up the Chargers. Turner into the arms of Seau. He got him a little room with four. Michael Turner. Like a battering ram, and he puts both arms around it. It lower his lowers his head, and it's going up in there. And and the Chargers, they know what type of defense they're going against. And you got to look at success when you're running the football. When you get four and five yards, that's what you want to do, of course. LT had some high praise for Turner. Loves his attitude, and he can only watch. Had a couple of early carries and a short catch. And Turner into the pile for three more. It's a good match for this defensive line of New England. They are very good at stopping the run. That's what this defense is designed to do, to not let teams get big runs or dominate the clock by getting first downs and running the football. And the San Diego Chargers on the other side, they got a big, powerful offensive line, and it was one of them. One big reason why they beat the Indianapolis Colts last week. Four wides, including Gates. On a third and three. Sproles makes the grab, has the first. Bounced out by Samuel, the four-yard pickup. That's all they needed. Talk about LaDainian Thompson being out. Chargers. Maybe the deepest team in the NFL at the running back position. You got LaDainian Thompson. You've said a lot of nice things about Michael Turner. And then Darren Sproles. Special teams. And then comes in in situations like this past one. Third and short. Gets out of the backfield and catches the football. Another first down carry. Turner. For two. That's all. You know, they played the first time. You remember they brought it up, Jim. Lord Turner said, we just want to get some first downs. 
eat up the clock some. And the, they played in week two. The Chargers had a couple very long, time consuming drives. Those were in the second half when they already were being yeah, thoroughly handled. Over. But yep. it's kind of happened. It has happened quite a bit against this New England defense. Teams move up and down the field. Just can't always score touchdowns. It's second and eight. Rivers is hit on that leg as he is picked off by Samuel, who out battled Chambers for the football. And that's Gates falling on him, but Rivers took a hit. Somehow he's back up. The pass floated a bit. Chambers and Samuel went up for it, and it was Asante who pulled it down. Oh, Mike Crable, what a spin move on the outside. And that move, Phillip Rivers, good job of stepping up. But you're Chris Chambers. You've got to fight for that football, and you cannot let Asante Samuels come in front and around you and make that interception. Boy, he had position on him when the ball arrived, too. Use your body. Asante Samuels, he's, uh, he has shown over the last two years he knows how to get to the football and make the play. Now the Patriots will try to cash in on the turnover from the 24. Another first down with ease. Slipped away from Sean Phillips. Goes for 12. Both interceptions in this game thrown by the team that was going with the win. Look at this face up top. The defense worried about the wide receivers going down the field. Kevin Falk catches it. And again, he's caught so many of them. They're very good after they catch it. They catch it cleanly. And they pick up extra yards. Already with five catches, Kevin Falk. First down from the 13. Brady waiting and throwing. Has got the touchdown, New England. Samuel set it up. It didn't take him long. Just two plays to cover the 24 yards. Stavsky adds one more. When New England's taking it deep down the field, they're getting touchdowns. San Diego's had to settle for field goals. It's Brady to Gaffney, and it's 14-6. Patriots. Sante Samuel with his fifth career playoff pick in only his fifth year New England blanked in the first quarter that ended a playoff run of 19 consecutive quarters in the postseason where they had scored but they've come back here in the second quarter with a pair of touchdowns Jabbar Gaffney who emerged late last year had a spectacular playoff run last year Including a touchdown in the AFC Championship game at the back of the end zone against Indianapolis. And he had 10 catches against San Diego in that divisional round where they went in and beat the number one seed, San Diego. Scrolls. And out to the 28. You know, Jim, let's look at what Tom Brady sees. Ben Watts is going to go up the field. Watch Wes Welker as he comes across. He opens it up. Here comes Wes Welker. The defense reacts. And now look inside Jabbar Gaffney. That little space, that's all they need. And that's what I've said so many times. That's why it's hard to drop back and react. The Patriots are too good at throwing and catching and getting up the field. That's why the pressure defense has worked better for San Diego in this game. It scrolls. And he is quickly wrapped up by Teddy Bruschi for no gain. 
Danny Bruschi, not one of the bigger middle linebackers in the NFL, but he knows how to work around those big offensive linemen and make tackles. Excellent when it comes to stopping the run. He, play, he had an outstanding game last week against Jacksonville, and so far he's made a few good tackles today. Pinnock is the fullback. Turner returns. Fake to him. Go down the field for Chambers. This time he has the catch in front of Samuel. Oh, that's a nice throw. For 15, and San Diego has its 10th first down of the game. You could tell, again, down the field, a nice move inside Asante Samuel. Really not full. It's just a perfect throw by Phillip Rivers. And when you watch San Diego play, Typical North Turner as he's been everywhere in the NFL. They look down the field and they want big plays when they throw it. 240 to go in the second quarter. The Chargers have two timeouts and they're airing it out. Pass is short and it's intercepted. And it's Ellis Hobbs, balls out. And two Patriots alertly were in the area. About to lead the convoy down the field for Hobbs. Yeah, just the, right there. The pick by Hobbs, the recovery by Sanders. This is where you don't really judge your feelings or how you are physically as a quarterback. No chance. Top of your screen. Phillip Rivers, this is underthrown 10 yards, even though it's downwind. You got a right leg that's hurt. Hard to get your legs into the throw when you really try for that extra strength. And it comes up way short, causes the interception. Basically serves as a punt, which is, of course, not what they were looking to do. After they had that one completion to Chambers, they thought maybe they could do some business before the half. Now New England can, with a full allotment of timeouts to work with. When you play man-to-man, -man, you got to look for the double moves. Brady now is going to try a long ball of his own, and it's batted down. Stallworth, the intended target. Again, it's Jammer making a play. Well, it's, it's, I know you can't do it every play, but look at it. They're challenging them right here. Quentin Jammer, line of scrimmage. Good job. And that's what you want to do. If you can't intercept it, break it up, and then you hope somebody that's not covering a guy, Clinton Hart, comes over. You hope he can get the deflection. Second down and 10. It's full. Oh, he bounces out. And pushed up on the three with 2.11 to go. Logan Mankins with a big block. It goes for eight. That looked like that was going to get stopped for no gain. Really good charge by the defensive line. Mankin pulling. Oh, look at Oh, nice blocks up front. Oh, look it at was, him. It's just a lot of good blocks. Logan Mankins, you're the one. He sprung him to the outside. We've reached the two-minute warning. New England leads it, 14-6. And coming up, we've got the Sprint Halftime Report. Jake B, quarterbacking things in the studio. They're all getting set. Dan Chan and Boomer and Coach Cower. And they'll review the first half of this one and the latest on the Giants and Packers NFC title tilt later tonight on Fox. That's uh, all coming up. Sprint Halftime Report back to the boys in the studio. Now a third and short on the way for New England. San Diego backs off the blitz. And they go over to Welker and it's incomplete. Jammer on the coverage. Yeah, good job by Quentin Jammer once again. He is having some day. They let Wes Welker come in motion to create space and he breaks back outside but Tom Brady just flushes it it comes out of his hand perfect too much speed for Wes Welker to catch like let me see what Hanson can do into the breeze and that scrolls 33 yard line and hops out to 35 Randall Gay coming in for reinforcement in that Patriot secondary. 
third fewest allowed in the league this year in the last two minutes of the half. First or second half. Yeah, it's hard to give up points when your offense is always on the field. That's true. And of course, their offense leads the league yeah. most points scored before a half. They're going to go draw. And they're going to go sprawls. And he darts for about six. Yeah, they got plenty of time, of course. A minute 35 and two timeouts. Little Rivers looking at the sideline. Do you want us to hurry up? Of course. He's got Gates on the field. Gates without a catch. Gates far from 100%. LT almost the entire way on the sideline. Again, it's Sproles. Has the first. Has the outside. Darren Sproles racing into the secondary and down to the 31. Was he down? They rule that he was down. It was Sanders who had the recovery. He had recovered his own teammate, Hobbs. Jim, what a weapon. Darren Sproles, what a... We heard it from all the Patriots this week. You always have to take notice when he's in the game. He's quick. He makes people miss. We saw the screen he caught last week against the Indianapolis Colts, and that was a terrific run there. Man. We're doing the ruling on the field. Comes from up top inside two minutes, a booth review. Merriweather knocked it out after the 26-yard run. Waiting for Jeff Triplett to come out of the uh, voting booth, but this is going to be one that's going to stay with San Diego. Yeah, Darren Sproles, he is taken to the ground. So there, when when you're taken to the ground, it cannot cause a fumble, and that's when he came out when, once he hit down. In other words, what I'm trying to say, the ground cannot cause a fumble in a situation like that. After reviewing the play. The runner is down by contact. Therefore, it's still San Diego's ball, first and ten. They have it at the 31 of New England. You, you understood what I was saying, didn't it you? It made total sense to me. I've been around you long enough to be able to interpret these things. You, you yeah. decipher it. Okay, De good. Decode. Decipher. Well, my face is starting to freeze up like Jeff Griffiths. <laughs> I don't have an electric blanket around me. Uh, you can borrow mine. Oh, okay. 42 seconds, clock running. That's Gates. Gates with his first catch. Good for about eight. They may want to take the quick timeout. That leaves him with one. Again, coming up, the Sprint Halftime Report. And we'll hear what they have to say from back in New York. JB, Dan Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower reviewing the first half. It's all coming up in the Sprint Halftime Report. Hey, Antonio Gates, Jim, he looked. I did not see that last week in Indianapolis where he made a sharp move. That time, terrific catch. Then he just pivoted and turned right around. So that another good reason for the Chargers to have optimism when it comes to the second half. Tell the New England Patriots, obvious passing situations, you better double cover him, too. They sent him out wide to the left, Gates. A second and two, 26 seconds. Right side scrolls, wrapped up a yard short of the first. It was Merriweather with the tackle. And they have to take another timeout. And that's it for them. When you think about Brady and that offense, when they got the Hobbs interception and they've been able to put yet another drive together because they've been moving it the last two times they had it. Of course, that one drive was just a two play drive off of the pick. But had they been able to drive down again and score, you, you start to go into the halftime thinking, wow, this is on the brink of being out of reach. Not out of reach, but it's starting to move in that direction. Now you got San Diego coming back. Their defense makes a stop, gets the ball back. They get the big run by Sproles. And any points on the board right here. And we're going to go to the second half of this AFC Championship game with it wide open. Absolutely. Good job by the San Diego Chargers here at the end of the first half. Not only getting a chance to get some points, but they didn't give the football back after being, you know, trying to get those first downs. So the, the Chargers have done an excellent job in this, this series of giving themselves a chance to score. 
Timeout, New England. Now the Patriots wanted a chance to see what San Diego was thinking. Again, the Chargers without any timeouts. Should there be something here where no one gets to the sideline or it's not incomplete, that field goal unit better be ready to run out there fast. If they don't get the first down, though, Jim, if they get the first down, the offense, then they can line up, spike, spike the it. football, sure. and give their field goal unit a chance to get out there. Katie has uh, made two chippies so far in this game. You know, you know, really, I look at this here. If I was the San Diego Chargers, I'd line up, and if New England plays a conservative defense and gives you a chance to hit a seam, I'd look to throw it up the field inside and try to score. No use trying to just pick up a, a, a couple a yard and then spike the football. Rivers with pressure throwing it away. Hi Warren. Well San Diego had that thought but both wide receivers double covered Philip Rivers right away knows there's nothing he can do and very smart just throw it away. This will be about a 40 yard field goal. That's going to be right on the number. In his postseason career, Kading is 0 for 4 from beyond 39 yards. Belichick's going to ice him. Watch this. Yeah, he's already signaled for it. So timeout, New England. Four career playoff games for Kading. He's had a miss in all four playoff games. Of course, the crucial one against the Jets a few years back. Last year, he actually had one 54 yards at the end of the game against the Patriots, trying to send it to overtime. Well, you're answering the question. That's uh, that's that's why Bill Belichick has called a timeout. He wants Nate Kading to think about those misses. And that was brought up yesterday. Our director Mike Arnold asked him, asking about timeouts in these type of situations. You always, it's always kind of a feeling, but I think they pre planned the fact that Nate Kane even missed those field goals, Jim. They were going to try to ice him. Of course, a little twist, not that anybody gives that, you know, much about it, but he won the AFC side of it, won the Pro Bowl for the AFC this past year for Coach Belichick with a kick. And this one is good from 40. So Kading, three for three. Pretty pumped up, he should be. His longest postseason field goal. Good from 40. <laughs> Don't get the there you go. fist pump all Hands, that off. Get some uh, high fives in there, head button. Philip Rivers knows how big that one was. Absolutely, just momentum and just more positive reinforcement. Not that the San Diego Chargers need it. You think about the ones who have stepped up for San Diego today. Some unexpected heroes like Kading, like Sproles, like Michael Turner, Quentin Jammer. These are the type of guys that had to come in here today with Gates hobble, Tomlinson on the sideline. Back up the depth of San Diego. It is shown, but probably the most impressive thing that I've seen in the first half by the Chargers is the fact when they've wanted to, in crucial situations, they can play man-to-man -man defense and cover the New England wide receivers and get Tom Brady off the field. That's the big key of this first half so far. Well, they're getting Rivers off the field right now. Give him a little extra time in that locker room. No need to be sitting out here waiting. Gates as well. Yeah, this North Turner just send them in early. Yep. Go on in, guys. Yep. But Phillip Rivers, that's another one. I'm, I'm, I'm really shocked that how well he has moved around and I even though he threw two interceptions still a very positive first half for him and the team. When Jammer who's had uh, a lot of contact with the football in this first half uh, does once more as he'll hold it for Kading. There's Hobbs who set the NFL record 
on the first game of the season with a 108 yard kick return against the Jets. They don't put it on the ground. They go ahead and send it deep to the dangerous Hobbs. Spins away from a hit and a second one and then he's finally brought down by Tim Dobbins. And that runs out the time. First half complete. One half to go for the Lamar Hunt Trophy. Patriots lead it 14 to 9. And we'll be back with the Sprint Halftime Report after this message. And a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. to be presented after this one the Lamar Hunt trophy two quarters to go to the Super Bowl Jim Nance along with Bill Sims and Steve Tasker on hand here in Foxborough at 14 9 is the score how about that uh, first half performance with all the injured Charger players well it was a terrific job I think for the Chargers hanging in the game playing on defense even though their big stars didn't have a good first half the backups did well all right this second half again brought to you in uh, high definition here on CBS. You see New England with the football first in this quarter and kind of interesting the absence again of Randy Moss not on the field but in the uh, stat sheet here Phil. Yeah you know it is Jim the way the San Diego Chargers are playing defense New England has got to get Randy Moss get him off the line of scrimmage put him in motion and give him a chance to run down the field and run by whoever's covering him. Moss was in the news this week. He was accused of hitting a woman down in Florida during the first week of the playoffs when they had the bye. Someone talked about that may be a distraction for this team as they send it down to Maroney. And Maroney just driving the legs out to the 40. Let's go down to Steve Tasker. What do you have, Steve? Well, Jim, I spoke to Norv Turner at halftime, and he said it's very doubtful that LaDainian Tomlinson will get back into this game. He tried to go there looking at him, but he says it's very doubtful we'll see him again. I also asked him about Phillip Rivers. He says he's happy with Phillip and his performance. He says they have chances for big plays against this team and this defense, but the pressure has been a problem. Well, there's uh, Rivers sitting next to Tomlinson on the bench. It's hard to say this. Ladanian Tomlinson not coming back in. It's not that big of a blow because they we've we've talked about it earlier. They have two backups that can still make plays. Starting at the 39. Now they bring Moss into the game uh, or try to get him into the game with a catch, but it's dropped. And we we're talking about the big three Tomlinson actually the first two snaps of the game were handoffs to Tomlinson for five yards Gates had a catch just before the half. Yeah to Tim just to keep talking about these guys they showed it last week it shows you how talented San Diego is and the depth of their football team when their premier stars are not getting it done because of injuries they still find ways because of other good players. Second down and ten. There's the low pass fielded. And that's Welker, about a yard shy of the first. Now Randy Moss with again no catches in this one had a reverse for 14 yards in the first half after yep. only one catch against Jacksonville. This says it all. Look at the tight coverage. The one time he's open, Tom Brady overthrows him, but you get him involved in the game by letting him run it. But again. Good coverage so far by San Diego's defensive well, backs. Third and a yard, and again, they lean on Heath Evans, and he delivers for a second time on third and short. And what about Moss and the idea that perhaps what happened this week, the stories were coming out, and, you know, all the back and forth with that, how would that affect this game? Well, you know, Jim, you, you asked me that question. I said it will not affect this New England Patriots team because of the culture they've created up here, but it's a personal issue. 
and when it's personal with a player, teammates don't talk about it in the locker room to let it become a distraction. First down, Maroney. Running right side for a yard, Jamal Williams in on the hit. And just to, to illustrate, and, and not to pick on Tony Romo, but a situation like that where it becomes a different type of news, then the press is always talking about it to you. You comment on it like it didn't distract him or it's not hurting the team. Then I think situations like that can distract your team. Cromarty over there, manning up. What a season for Cromarty. Second year man out of Florida State who led the, the league in interceptions. And Brady in trouble, and he is decked. He is hit by Castillo and also Sean Phillips. A loss of three on the sack. Yeah, San Diego just doing such a good job of mixing up what they're doing on defense. They play soft, people are wide open, and Tom Brady thinks he's going to have a nice, easy throw to the right, and he looks out there, and the defenders are on him, and it's hard to adjust, so he pulls it down and gets sacked. They had two against the Patriots sacks in week two, both of them by Merriman. It's the first sack given up by New England since their first snap against Jacksonville last Saturday. Now on third down, ball gets back into the hands of San Diego with Drayton Florence coming out with it. How many times we said that, and we said it, the Chargers, they, we are going to get turnovers. Cover them close. The ball gets knocked up in the air in a cold, windy day. Tom Brady looking. Is anybody open? It takes a while. The throw was just a little bit off target to Dante Stallworth. He's not even going to get the first down anyway. And then Drayton Florence sees it. Even he had tight coverage on Wes Welker. Florence had a pick of Brady last year in the playoffs. First down, that's Turner leaning to the 45. So they've gotten Brady twice in this game. And, and, and again, I know I've said it a lot. But so many times when you watch the Patriots play, nobody challenged their offense. Of course, San Diego, a lot of teams don't do it because they don't have the talent. The Chargers, physically, physically they can match up against anybody. The second down and six. What will they do with the takeaway? Rivers guns it, has it. It's Jackson. I got to ask you about Philip Rivers. The guys in the studio at halftime were suggesting they thought Rivers should be replaced at this point by Billy Bullock, and I could just watch you, and you just could not disagree more. I, I do disagree. You know, I watched him in the first half, and, and, and Boomer Esiason said it right. He's the heart and soul of the team. The way he's playing, he's out there playing hurt, and never for once in the first half that I see his play and go, oh my gosh, they got to take him out of there. So first down, New England 28. Thomas given chase and a pass wide of Turner. Of course, I when I heard Bill Cowher say it, I went through a mental check and went through the whole first half and go, well, is there something I didn't see? But he's right. Hard for him to move around. The right knee, big brace, but still good enough to give himself a chance to throw the football down the field. Well, he directed them to over 200 yards of offense in that first half. And you know, Jim, you want to put Billy Bullock, who really hasn't played the whole season except that little bit against the Indianapolis Colts in this situation? No. I want to play with the guy that's been under center all year long for me. Play action fake. Rivers. Again, looking for any action. Now plants the feet. Oh, what a catch. Leaning for it. They give him the catch. It's Chambers for the first. 15 yards. He made the catch. There's no question about that. Where his feet still on the ground when he gets both hands on the football. Good job by Chris Chambers. A little ballet, and yes, you're not going to have to challenge that one. The right toe did hit the ground on the way down. So now this is the point where San Diego was unable to finish a couple of drives in the first half. They actually had inched it inside of the 10. But they've got first down at the 13. He's got Vincent Jackson. He's never down, and now he's got about three Patriots converging on him. It's good for six. 
Well, what a job by Phillip Rivers. Looking right. The play is supposed to go to the right to Darren Sproles. Nothing there. Then he sees Vincent Jackson crossing the whole field. He runs through the coverage, which will happen when you give a quarterback extra time. Antonio Gates comes out. What efforts by Jackson and Chambers. Look at that. 11 catches, 148 yards between them. The second and four. It's Turner looking for the tough yards inside. He's a yard short. You know, Jim, every, we, we keep talking about the guys, the stars who are not in there making plays, but Michael Turner and Vincent Jackson is almost like taking the place of Antonio Gates. He, he looks like a tight end. He's so big, but he can really run. And they have found ways to get him inside, to move, to go down the field. He can do it all. Well, since they've had a couple of chances to try to take it all the way in, and they've come up short, this is a big third and one for this team. And a timeout called first by San Diego. Will come out of the break facing third and one. We are back third and one to go. Would this possibly be four down territory? Jim, you're a big, powerful football team. You got Michael Turner running back. I'd run it twice if that's what it takes to get a first down. They're going with Turner. Turner trying to get outside, and they lose yardage with Junior Seau. Now, of course, that's not what you were talking about. That's a loss of a yard. And Junior Seau just shoots the backside. Oh, I don't know how he got so free. You got to block down that way, especially when you run into your left. And no, you don't run it twice after that. Boy, Michael Turner, a big, strong running back. You got a big physical offensive line. You should be able to run right at him and get that first down. Going wide is always a risk in short yardage situations. Some are saying now, wait a minute, why did why did they call timeout? Set up that. And it's another field goal by Kading. This from 24 yards. Off the Florence interception. Fourth field goal. 14-12 New England. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines, you are now free to be more productive. Visit Southwest.com. Coors, brewed with Rocky Mountain water, always Coors the banquet beer. And by GMC, we are professional grade. Well, bundle up, folks. Wind chills here right around. Wind chills about zero at the moment. Noticeable drop in temperature here since the opening kick, but the winds have subsided. Junior Seau making quite a play on that uh, yeah. third down run. Jim, his experience, experienced linebackers, the San Diego Chargers, they pull offensive linemen, they create space. Junior Seau, Seau sees it, boom, big play, stops. Now they got to kick another field goal. Seau, who of course played so many years with San Diego, made 12 Pro Bowls as a Charger, most by any Charger all time. Was with New England last year, but was injured in the postseason. As a member of the Patriots, couldn't stand to watch the playoff game down in San Diego. Went surfing instead. It's Maroney. And down at the 32. He went surfing in Oceanside, so they could not bear to watch it. Tom Brady back out, holding on to that two-point lead. 33-yard line, the starting point for the Patriots. Brady now, including that divisional playoff game last year, has been picked five times by San Diego. They got him three times the last January. He's going to run it with Maroney. Got a huge hole. Sidesteps a hit. Clinton Hart finally chops him near the 50. Stephen Neal was the one who really opened up that line. Goes for 18. Yeah, the passing game is not working, so what do they do? They bring in extra tight ends, and they hit San Diego right at them. And Lawrence Maroney, just like last week. Watch Mankins here get Cooper, and then he turns and gets another player, too. Oh, that's what it takes. You know, you got to get your offensive line, get them involved, let them get angry, and let them hit somebody. Timeout called by New England. That last play for 18 yards, the longest play today by the Patriots. 
the NFL on CBS is sponsored by Jordan become legendary and by Warner Brothers new motion picture 10,000 BC in theaters everywhere March 7th well the Chargers trying to become the third straight AFC team to come out of the wild card round to advance to the Super Bowl after what Pittsburgh and Indianapolis have done the last two years. They're down though at 14 12 and New England on a first and 10. It's Moroni going to the outside and fighting hard but still no gain. What you want to do as a defense. Engage an offensive lineman and don't get turned. Nice job down the line. Luis Castillo, he's the one that really disrupts the play and he allows all the other Chargers to use your speed and get to the football. But a defensive lineman, don't get turned. Hard for a running back to find a lane sometimes. Second down and 10, and Falk had started in the backfield and shifts over to the right side. Brady, pump fake, right, goes left, Moss open. Moss has a catch. And he's down at the 31 with a first. Well, it's 100%. This is the bid, but don't break defense. And the New England Patriots, they wish San Diego would do this every down. And they just march down and score. How about that? You go, well, how could you leave Randy Moss so wide open? Because Tom Brady had time. And every as the seconds click by, the defense just kept dropping back farther. Leaves Randy Moss wide open. Open for 17 yards with three tight ends in the game. They go back to Maroney, light with a big block, and Maroney sidestepping hits. Another first at the 20. Second time we've seen it. Three tight ends, two plays on this drive, and both times it has gone for big runs. Watch number 70 again, Logan Mankins. Kid oh. grew up on a 10,000 acre cattle ranch outside of Fresno. Was a calf roper as a kid, taught by his dad. And I tell you, when you're that big and you're taught calf roping, and your dad says, hey, I'm going to bring on just one more cow, coming into the NFL and taking on your opponent, it's not that big a deal. No, nah, it didn't. He's shown it today. Doing an excellent job of moving around, making blocks. And he's in the Pro Bowl this year. It's Maroney ducking low. And another good. Run. He's churning out the yardages. Maroney now he had a huge third quarter last week against Jacksonville. Had almost 70 yards rushing in that quarter last week. Uh, you know, I, I think back to last year. I remember Charlie Castley on the pregame show. A lot of people thought Lawrence Maroney was the best running back coming out into the draft. And he had at times a spectacular rookie season. I think he would be more well known and have a, another terrific season if it wasn't for Randy Moss, Wes Welker, and all the good wide receivers. Going with the power game here, Phil, again. It's a three tight end formation. They shift Watson to the right on second and four. Maroney, they're riding him now. He's cutting, bobbing, and weaving a near first. Ryan Bingham with the hit. Thought you were doing a boxing match here for a minute. <laughs> cutting, bobbing, and weaving. He's moving and uh, maybe moving the chains one more time. This is another illustration. What a tip to Ted Cottrell, the defensive coordinator for San Diego Chargers, tell us. They got seven offenses. They got this one with these guys. They got five wide receivers. And now, I don't think they expected to see a three tight end, one running back offense, and it's worked very well. First and goal to go. And right on the 10. Moroni getting quite a workout. This time spun down by Ryan Bingham, who's made the last two tackles. This one for no gain. We start doing the math on it, and the touchdown, of course, be so huge to give it a, assuming the extra point, two score differential. Here we go. Uh, has come in, caught a touchdown in that second quarter. Kevin Falk will flank right, Brady out of the gun. Go from three tight ends, one play to the spread, and Brady fires it. Walker decked two yards short of the end zone by Marlon McCree. So third and goal coming up. They moved Randy Moss. Nobody went with him, so that tells Tom Brady it's his own defense. He knew right away as he dropped back, he was going to throw it to Wes Welker, and again he falls forward 
and picks up those extra yards. Crucial play on the way. This is where Ben Watson is so tough. Caught two last week for touchdowns. Down deep. Well, you got a double cover Wes Welker in the slot. He's been a target a couple of times on these type, type of situations inside the five this year for touchdowns. We're looking for him. That's shut down. Now Brady goes back to the end zone. He's intercepted. It's Cromartie with the pick. And he is tackled by Kazier. They hit Brady for the third time, and New England comes up empty. And they double covered Wes Welker. Tom Brady goes the other way. Misjudges the length of Antonio Cromartie. Here's Wes Welker. This is where Tom Brady wants to go. Drayton Florence good on the coverage. He overplays the outside because there's a defender to the inside to help him. He knows it. Makes Tom Brady go the other way. They go with Turner who gets past the line of scrimmage and has a first in 12 yards. And on the other side because Tom Brady goes from the right to his left. Ben Watson to the back of the end zone. Watch 31. Nobody to cover. He frees up. And Antonio Camardi, watch the throw by Tom Brady. It's not clean. It wobbles. It goes a little lower and shorter than he expects. That's why it's intercepted. And it's Turner again. It's time for three yards. That's why Cromartie, despite starting only eight games in the regular season, came away with ten picks, setting a team record. I've said this phrase a few times today, ball skills. In other words, they just know how to see the football and catch it when they get those opportunities. And Antonio Camardi is every bit of six foot two. So when you go to throw to the top of him, it's very, very difficult. Darren Sproles, the running back on second and seven. Manu Maliuna steps back to join him in the backfield. Rivers flings it incomplete between gates. And Sproles was racing that way also. Wow. A little different. This New England defense has been very conservative today and now they don't like the way the game is going so they're going to change up and that time they played pressure defense themselves and they covered everybody down the field well. Peace defensive coordinator. Six defensive backs in for New England. On the third and seven. Harrison blitzing pass incomplete. Sanders had Manu Maliuno well guarded. Well, when New England wants the pressure, especially from the outside, two guys seem to get it done. Mike Vrabel and Rodney Harrison. Well, Rodney Harrison blitzes so much, he has turned into an excellent pass rusher. Cyphers is in if he can find a little of that jet stream that still remains going in this direction He can let fly some big ones Wes Welker is back for the return He did not catch all of that one But gets a very generous bounce And the let it go all the way down to the 32 a 47 yard punt NFL.com your official online source for playoff and Super Bowl 42 news stats exclusive video highlights and more only at NFL.com Brady picked three times last year by the Chargers in the playoffs and they have picked them three more times today Yeah, just a good job by Quentin Jammer looking back for the football something they talked about we're gonna get some tips that one right there You're ready for this the first red zone interception he had thrown in two years since champ Bailey got him in a playoff game two years back he had thrown 62 touchdowns in the red zone since the Bailey pick until he threw another interception just a few minutes ago that Heath Evans open and Evans makes the quick burst for a first Merriman on the tackle but not until it goes for 14 this was the one Bailey got him and took off running. It was a memorable play, too, because Ben Watson went running after. But then after that, all these games, 200 and some odd of pass attempts and 62 touchdown passes in the red zone later, he finally gets picked again inside the 20 tonight by Cromarty. So much of that, of course, it's talent, his decision-making, but this Patriots team, they run the same play so much 
it helps a quarterback get better at those decisions and you make less errors. Go back to three tight ends. And on first down, Maroney makes a jump cut and he steps up to the 49 after three yards. Ryan Bingham having some active play here in this quarter as you know, we approach the last 30 seconds of the third. Jim, I think this is something the New England Patriots, they came into this game today. They were going to run the football more than usual. They thought they could do that and needed to against San Diego's defense. You know, Tom Brady is just going to let this run down. They won't have to go far to change sides. It's going to be the end of the third quarter with the score. New England 14 and San Diego 12. We've got one quarter to go to find out which team from the AFC will go to Arizona. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We're back to begin the final quarter in Foxborough. Jim Nance and Phil Sims and Steve Tasker. Chill at nine degrees. The second down and six for Brady and company with the lead at 14 12. Over to Welker. Got a block around in front. It was Gaffney with a great block. And Cromarty bounces him out, but another New England first. Goes for 10. Really well designed. Good blocking by the wide receivers. Three times a day, Tom Brady has taken. The football and throwing quick passes to the outside screen plays. And Wes Welker, who better to move fast in a little space to get yards? First down at the San Diego 40. And it's back to Moreno. He's into the secondary. He is zigging and zagging and taking off to the 20 yard line. A 20 yard run. Two tight ends in the game. And it's just look at the movement the offensive line is getting. Matt Light, left tackle, as far away from the play as you can get. And he makes a good block to let Lawrence Maroney. Well, look at him concentrating. Nice stiff arm, gets extra yards, and it looks like some of the runs he had last week against the Jacksonville team. 64 yards in this half for Maroney. 80 on the game. First down at the 20. Setting up a screen to Moroni. This worked for a big game last week. And Moroni lowers the shoulder and bounces McCree out of bounds as he rumbles for another nine. We came on this game today. We talked about the wide receivers. All of them to the right. It's just a fake. Look there. Another screen. But the guy that's really put this team over the top in the offense of recent is Lawrence Moroni. With his running and a good example there of his pass catching. He lowered that shoulder. As you see, a shaken up charger. And there's a medical timeout. We'll be right back. And that was Clinton Hart of the Chargers who was hurt, but there he is on the sideline standing up, replaced by Eric Weddle. Second and one, New England at the 11. It's Maroney. Getting all the work it seems and again breaking free down to about the seven. A lot of talk about a team coming from Southern California playing in the cold, but as pointed out by a number of people in the Charger organization, they won in the snow last year at Cleveland. They won in really cold foul weather at Buffalo last year. And you know, recent years when they've had to go into a situation like this, they have performed exceptionally well. Well, you know, Jim, if you are a passing team, it might have more to it. They're big, they can stop the run. And they run the football on offense. You can do that in cold weather. First and goal, first hit, well held. And then it's Maroney for a yard. And you look at this right here. Do I have to even say how big this is for the San Diego Chargers? Given the fact they haven't been able to get it across the goal line. Well, that, and it's not easy. They're not going to get big chunks, and they're out there on offense and, and long plays. So you just don't want to go down two scores. There's Olshansky. Clinton Hart's back out there. See him on the right of your screen. Will Brady be starting a new red zone touchdown streak? We're seeing it snapped in the third quarter at 62 touchdowns before a pick. On second and goal, he looks, throws, has 
his man. It's Welker with the touchdown, New England. Pressure defense, blitz on the outside by the Chargers. Tom Brady looks, Randy Moss double covered. Then he comes to his next receiver. That is Wes Welker coming across the field, and he is wide open. Wes Welker again came into the league as a Charger. They barely knew him. Signed as a free agent out of Texas Tech. Big extra point is good, which makes it nine. Brady's second touchdown pass of the day. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the new 2008 Focus. Verizon Wireless. And by Subway Restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. Now the Patriots have now that two score advantage and Wes Welker he was released after week one his rookie year but credited Tim Dwight for helping him out there in San Diego telling him to lose weight for more speed Sproles trying to exercise some of his speed but it is met at the 16 by the closing Eric Alexander. Watch the touchdown, Jim. To your right, Ben Watson up the field. Wes Welker comes underneath. Tom Brady wanted to go to Randy Moss. He's double covered. He comes off of him, and there is Wes Welker wide open. Terrific design and good pass protection allows Tom Brady to make the right decision. And the red zone story, such a big part of this one. Patriots. Three out of the four times Look at that. in the red zone touchdowns, the Cromartie pick. But three trips, three field goals for San Diego. Now it makes sense why I saw New England run about 50 plays inside the 10-yard line yesterday. Rivers. And four players come in to tackle. Chambers, good for 16. And again, LaDainian Tomlinson carried the football the first two plays of the game for five yards he really felt like that he was ready to go felt like he had appropriately tested let it go he told us in practice but just uh, you know it's a different deal when you're out here that level of energy and intensity and you're getting hit guys are leaning on you that's when you find out and first down Rivers goes off his back foot and almost and er uh, Hobbs coming in there trying to go back to Chambers pressure up the middle if there's not pressure up the middle Philip Rivers will make this throw easily. The receiver is wide open. You know, Rivers last year in the game against New England was hurt in that game. And again, they were the number one seed. Had they won the game, then they led by 11 in the first half against the Patriots and by eight at one time in the fourth quarter. Rivers would not have been able to play the rest of the postseason. He was... Uh, in a cast for eight weeks after that game with that foot injury. Now trying to direct his team from nine down and he just goes ahead and spikes it. Crowd saying, wait a minute, that's grounding, but he was outside the pocket, although it's being Number discussed. 43 in the area okay. and it's into the pass. So they say Sproles was close enough. Yeah, he was. And, and Jarvis Green, good job. He says, wait. They're letting me by a little too easy. I'm not this good of a pass rusher. So he comes off and he finds and there's Darren Sproles right in front of him and covers Darren Sproles. I tell you, they had it set up pretty nice, except Jarvis Green recognized it and stopped it. It's a third and 10 with 11 and a half to go. Got time. Fires it, gets it, Jackson in the New England territory. Wow. Right between Hobbs and Merriweather for 18. This is some faith outside of your screen. Vincent Jackson bends it in. Phillip Rivers threw this way before he even started to go in there, and he threw it soft. And Tom Brady can't believe it. He knows if we stop him, the game could be over. He's saying, get them off the field, put it back in our hands, and we'll milk it to the end, or we'll take it down and 
put it even more out of reach. It's only nine though with 10 44 to go. There's Gates. His second grab goes for nine. Randy Harris and tackles him. You know, Jim, I want to go back to Vincent Jackson. You know, for so long, everybody always said, well, they got to find somebody else out in San, you know, San Diego. And this How, guy has so much potential. And you It's know, there. You see it. But you don't have to rely on it because they've always given all the plays to Antonio Gates and LaDainian Tomlinson. That worked. So you don't get to your third option. Now that they have to, you see he can come through. He has stepped up big time the last two weeks, second and one, and slipping past the first hit of Wilford. It's Turner for the first, a gain of four. Seymour and Rivers. Oh. And then Jeff Triplett. He didn't pay much yeah, attention good. to the fact that Rivers maybe acted it out a little bit. It's a good no call. And who knows what Philip Rivers was saying to Richard Seymour. Phillips not afraid to jaw with anybody. First down at the 36. Oh, and not turning around in time is Gates. By the way, our season premiere of the PGA Tour is next week. The Buick Invitational with Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. Jim Furyk among those expected at the Buick Invitational where Tiger's had so much success and Phil has as well. Mickelson, of course, a face painting supercharger fan. No doubt nervous at the moment over this one. He Second. paints his face. <laughs> you know he told you that. <laughs> Second down and ten. That ball's tipped. Almost picked. Harrison. Yeah, it's tipped. Antonio Gates is open. This ball is going to be completed. That's Vince Wilfork. You saw Antonio Gates going across the screen. He beats Rodney Harrison. The Patriots, tall, long, they knock a lot of passes down. Now they just converted on a third and ten. They need to do it again. And maybe seven or eight yards with put Kading into consideration. Because they need two scores anyway. Harrison closing in. Rivers pass incomplete. Again, Rodney Harrison for the third time in this game influences the play. Crashing in on the quarterback. It is crucial moment once again on the outside. Rodney Harrison on the blitz. He's been doing it all day long, but in big spots here in the second half. New England's defense kind of changing up and pressuring the other uh, San Diego's offense, and it's worked. They're not going to go for it here at the 36 of New England at fourth and ten. New England's playing for the fake in case there is. And again, Cypher's so good at pinning teams inside the ten in situations like this, although it failed to work in the first half. Fair catch, fall. Not that deep, though. Only to the 12. 24-yard punt. And this winter can get out of the cold with America's summer sensation heating up now in February. Take a plunge. Big Brother starting up Tuesday, February 12th on America's number one network. North Turner's defense needs another takeaway. Junior Seau, he just had so much emotion in his eyes talking to us two days ago about how much this game means to him. And there is Maroney. Is just a, he's just the story of this second half for the Patriots as Evans helped clear him for 12. Yeah, he's the story. It's the blocking by the tight ends that have really freed Lawrence Peroni in the second half. You know, he's just a versatile running back. He's got the power, but look at the moves that the four round tacklers. It gets that instant speed. Once you stop him, he's back to full speed after about two or three steps. But the blocking by Kyle Brady and Ben Watson, that's what's really enabled Lawrence Maroney to get outside. With 81 yards on the ground this half. First to 10. Straight drop Brady. And they drop Brady, in fact, at the 16. That's Cooper and Oshansky. That's a big play there to send back so far on first down. Well, that is some power rushing. That's what it is. And that's Stephen Cooper catches. 
Gets Logan Mankins, pushes him off balance. And again, the blitz, it caught him by surprise. They don't blitz too often inside. It's usually Sean Merriman or Sean Phillips from the outside. Stephen Cooper, who grew up a Patriots fan, raised right here in this area, in on that sax. And it's a loss of eight. Set up the screen. That's Falk giving a good chunk of it back. Finally tripped up by Florence. Seven yards on the game. Now yeah, the last four possessions, a punt, a couple of picks, including the one by Cromarty in the end zone. And then the touchdown drive with the touchdown throw. Brady's second of the game. Going to Wes Welker this time. The first had gone to Gaffney. So Maroney sitting this play out halfway through the fourth. Third and 11. You can't sit back. You got to pressure the Patriots. Cottrell knowing his defense has to make a play here. Chargers desperate to get the ball back. To the top opens. Falk diving catch. Did he roll for the first? The spot looks like it's going to be enough for the first. It's close, Jim. Oh, nope, they gave it to him. Devin Falk, just such a valuable utility man. Picks up 11. That's a tough catch. We saw him make one earlier in this game. Down low to the side, inside the 10. And he definitely secured it. He had possession of the football, even though the football hit the ground. They go, that would count as a catch if you challenged him. They go from second and 18 to picking up the first. And Maroney's back out there and knocked down hard. By Clinton Hart and Ryan Bingham. One yard gain. Again, February 10th, the Pro Bowl. Presented by State Farm live from Honolulu. And you can check your local listings. Well, now you got time against you. And if you're the Chargers defense, you you there's no more hope, and you got to make it happen. And if you give up a long touchdown or a double move, so be it. You need two scores. You got five minutes and 50 seconds. Well, they've doubled up the Chargers' time of possession, second half. Oh, oh. And a timeout. Oh, oh, San Diego has to burn. Terrible. That's a bad one. Leave him only with one. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Toyota moving forward and by IBM when you're ready to stop talking innovation and start doing visit IBM.com slash do and we are back here in Foxborough at Gillette Stadium under six minutes to play Jim Nance Phil Sims Steve Tasker what a catch by Falk yeah Kevin Falk here's Eric went watch he gets picked on the outside by Dante Stallworth and that was a well-designed, clever play, no risk for the offense, and an easy decision for Tom Brady. That's what you need in crucial situations. Second, Coach it up. Second down and nine. Yeah. And get the pass over to Stallworth, who stumbles on the catch, spins away. And is he out of bounds? He is. 9.41 to go in the game and a third down play on the way. Picked up six. Looked like he might even lose yardage at first. You know, Jim, and this is what I call, I just said coaching him up. Look at all these little. The pass to Kevin Falk. This is what, about the fourth or fifth time we've seen those quick ones to the outside. They're easy for Tom Brady. Of course, he can make those throws, but it's well designed and keeping a defense off balance. That's what they're designed to do. And the clock back running again after the reset at 5.20. Third and three, though. This is it. Brady has a lot of time for some options, and he picks up Falk again, who reaches back for another sensational catch. How about that? That's about the third or fourth good catch we have seen today from Kevin Falk. Big celebration on New England sideline because they think that's it. But the offensive line, nobody. Nobody nice catch going. To, oh. oh my gosh fingertips it. No quarterback in the NFL is afforded the time that Tom Brady gets. He creates some of it himself by moving the talent outside makes defenses play a little safe. But the main reason 
the offensive line. And they just continue the drive now with a new set of downs. And Maroney to about three yards. And again, San Diego can only stop the clock once outside of the two-minute warning. Tonight, don't miss the heart-stopping race to the finish, the season finale of The Amazing Race. Million dollars on the line. An episode you got to see. It's coming up tonight right here on CBS, America's number one network. San Diego, if you told them, hey, we're going to intercept Tom Brady three times, you go, oh, my gosh. Can you win? You think, mm. hey, we can win that game. And I saw Ladanian sitting on there the on the sideline, side again on the bench, how disheartened he has to be. Talk to us about how he wondered when he was early in his career if he'd ever even get a chance to be in a game like this. With the 4 and 12 and 8 and 8, he said, you know, you start to say, hey, we'll ever get to play in the big game. We'll have ever a chance at the Super Bowl. Now his team gets to that point where it's one game, actually now one quarter. It's a 14-12 game going into the fourth, and he can't contribute. So we got a timeout by San Diego, their last. These are the three plays for Ladanian. First and second snaps for San Diego. And he had a little catch. And that was it. Not to return. Well, I said it uh, even when we were talking about it, Jim, when you said these. You asked him a few questions about the Super Bowl yesterday. And he had, it took everything he had not to break out in tears because you, you knew it was an emotional moment. And he knew he was so close to getting a chance to go there. And, of course, the Bruce feeling still spilled over from last year when they lost yeah, to sure. New England. And he took great offense to the way that the Patriots celebrated on their home field, specifically Ellis Hobbs right on the helmet logo at midfield. And he'd been waiting, wanted that uh, game so desperately. In fact, uh, Philip Rivers talked about maybe them being too revved up week two when they yeah. met this regular season because of that hangover from that episode. Well, I'll say this. San Diego's young. They're going to be back. They got at least a couple more years of having this same team together. And third and short, Maroney. Wow. Another first before Cooper drags him down. Six An yards. Another way to win today. The defense came through in the red zone. Look at the blocks up front. Ben Watson on the outside. I said it, the tight ends, they have had a terrific day of blocking. They're not really involved in the pass offense anymore, Ben Watson and Kyle Brady, but they still ask them to do a lot when it comes to giving the running back space to run and letting him get outside. And that is worth verbalizing. The first Patriot with consecutive 100-yard performances in a postseason game since our old colleague, the pony, Craig James. And there is Maroney for three more. Coming up, we got the Subway Post Game Show and the presentation of the Lamar Hunt Trophy to the AFC champions. It'll be taking place right on the field here at Gillette Stadium. Plus, JB, Dan, Shannon, and Boomer, and Coach Cowher, will have their thoughts about this game. Again, look ahead to the NFC title game. All coming up, Subway Post Game Show. As they continue to work it, just another drive. This time, no hurry to just race down and score, just trying to put it away and doing it with tremendous efficiency. And Maroney for two more, and we reach the two-minute warning. Two minutes remaining for Arizona. Signs all around Gillette Stadium. Already proclaiming them AFC champions. It's not official yet, but uh, the last two times they've had the football, Brady's known what to do with it. Two times, a lot of pressure. Can you get it done in both times? They march down for a touchdown, and more importantly, this last one, they take all the time off the clock. This is the third down, though. And Maroney. And that will put the game away. He's got the first. You know what a drive it is, too. Again, the Subway Post Game Show is coming up. We're going to be heading down to the field to give the trophy away. The Lamar Hunt Trophy to the New England Patriots. They're going to be 18-0 going into the Super Bowl. I talk about a drive. You know, Phil, we were there week one when they played the Jets. And no one picked up on it. It actually crossed mine at the time. The first time they had the football all season, they started at their own nine-yard line against New York. And they had the patch on their helmets affixed from the start of the season. 91 
for a fallen teammate, Marquise Hill, who uh, was a drowning victim, died tragically last May down in Louisiana. An old college teammate, too, as well, Jarvis Green and Randall Gay. Jarvis Green wears his shoulder pads, Mar Marquise Hills. But they had the number 91, the 91 on their helmets. They had it the first time of the year. They took it 91 yards for a touchdown, and they've not stopped since. Another kneel down, it'll be official. Tom Brady will be heading to Arizona looking for a fourth Super Bowl title as well. Belichick will try to join Chuck Knoll with four. Perry celebrates with his family. His daughter Amanda, son Stephen and Brian. Everybody knows Coach. Belichick is this uh, super genius kind of mad scientist, if you will, football coach. You seldom get the glimpse of the, the father, the proud father. Very close relationship with those kids. Son Steven coming up from Rutgers where he's on the lacrosse team. Well, what a feisty effort by San Diego today, Phil. Yeah, it really was, Jim. They can be proud of what they've done, but the Patriots, 18 and nothing. That's something I never thought I would see in the NFL. They started talking about an undefeated season. All the people I'm talking about outside of the team, all the way back to September. They've lived it out all the way with all the talk. They are unbeaten going to Arizona and Super Bowl 42. The Subway Post Game Show is sponsored by Subway Restaurants. It's where to eat when you want to eat fresh. Subway, eat fresh. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our New York studios and the Subway Post Game Show. As you take a look at the celebration taking place there at Gillette Field, New England was at 21 12. I'm back here in Studio 43 with my colleagues alongside Dan Marino, Coach Bill Cowher, Shannon Sharp, and Boomer Osiason. A reminder that coming up tonight, CBS News presents the Age of Warming. That's followed by the season finale of The Amazing Race, then Cold Case and Shark. And it's all ahead tonight on CBS America's most watched network. So the New England Patriots advance to their fourth Super Bowl in the last seven years. They will await the winner of tonight's NFC Championship game between the Green Bay Packers and the New York Giants. Essentially, how did New England get it done? Well, you know, it's a different way for them to win. You know, all year they've been throwing the football all over the place. Tom Brady throwing the interception. They decided somewhere there in the third quarter they're going to run the football and dominate with Two tight ends at times, two backs, running Maroney, three tight, tight ends at times, and they just dominated the line of scrimmage. And Kevin Falk was uh, a big, big factor in the second half. Downs. Yes, catching balls out of the backfield, making plays when they needed to have it, and that's what it was. They just dominated the line of scrimmage. And you're right, Dan, but I'll tell you, the bottom line was that San Diego had their opportunities. They got the ball into the red zone three times, had to sell it for three field goals, and against this football team, when you have these type of opportunities, you have got to seize them. They took out the outside receivers. Kevin Falk, of all these offensive weapons, becomes a hero of this game. But congratulations to the New England Patriots. They didn't play their best game, but again, that's been the signature of this football team, finding ways to win. And I agree with you, Coach. We talked about it early, guys, in the morning. When you got opportunity to score, you had to get sevens. You wanted odd numbers, but you wanted sevens instead of threes. They didn't get it done, and then they turned the football over. And when they turn the football over, they make you pay the ultimate price. They get sevens while they hold you to threes. And give New England credit. I mean, there was a lot of pressure on these guys. This is the most pressure-packed pressure situation because you're one game away from the Super Bowl. Once you get there, the pressure's removed because you're at the game. Now, you never know, but I tell you what, guys, they're seven there, 18-0. Wow. wow. You know, here you go. There's Tom Brady as he celebrates his 100th career win as a starting quarterback. A tremendous job by him. But I'll tell you right now, he's not happy with his performance. No. Where was Randy Moss? You know, when they do have Kevin Falk Day at Gillette Stadium, maybe five or six years you know, down the road, that guy will be appreciated by the Patriot fans. And just a little sidebar here. You know, we talked about it at halftime, whether or not they should have benched Phillip Rivers and in, play, in favor of Billy Bullock. You know, I, for one, as a former starting quarterback in this league, can appreciate the guts and, the, and, and what Phillip Rivers did today. He played on a bad knee, torn ACL, bad MCL, and I know that the coach and Shannon wanted nope. to put Billy Bullock in there, but I have to tell you something, guys. 
you know, he's your leader. He's the guy that sets the tone. He put himself and his career on the line. So congratulations to, uh, to, uh, to Philip Rivers for putting forth the effort, and congratulations to the Patriots. What a tremendous event, and we will see them in Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, it, well, go ahead. Yeah. All right, all right, folks, here we go. Here's a look at our Jordan Brand Skycam play of the game, Jabbar Gaffney's 12-yard reception coming from uh, Tom Brady. That taking place in the second quarter. Two touchdown tosses on the day by Tom Brady. But that is our Jordan Brand Skycam play of the game. All right, folks, coming up, we'll send it back to Foxborough for the Lamar Hunt Trophy presentation when the Subway postgame show continues right here on CBS. Post the Subway Post Game Show is sponsored by Subway Restaurants. It's where to eat when you want to eat fresh. Subway, eat fresh. All righty, winning does not get old hat at all in New England. Richard Seymour and company excited to be advancing to the Super Bowl as we welcome you back to our New York studios and the Subway Post Game Show. A reminder that the road to the Final Four continues next Saturday right here on CBS. At 1 Eastern, the Yukon Huskies will face the number nine ranked Indiana Hoosiers. Then next Sunday at 1 Eastern, Michigan battles 11th ranked Michigan State in a Big Ten showdown. Next weekend, it's the season premiere of the PGA Tour and FedEx Cup. Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, and Jim Furyk are among those expected at the Buick Invitational. Our coverage begins at 3 Eastern on Saturday and Sunday. And right now, we take you back up to New England Foxborough for the presentation of the Lamar Hunt Trophy. Jim Nance is standing by to do the honors. All right, James Brown, thank you so much. And welcome back, folks, to the home of the AFC champion, New England Patriots. And now to present the Lamar Hunt Trophy that goes to the AFC champions, let me introduce Hall of Famer John Hanna and Hall of Fame candidate Andre Tippett with the presentation to the Kraft family. Andre? To the Kraft family, congratulations on the Patriots' victory this afternoon against a great San Diego Chargers team. I'd like to take this time to present to you the Lamar Hunt Trophy, which is annually given out to the champions of the American Conference champ, uh, American Football Conference. Congratulations to the Kraft family, the entire Patriot organization, and its fans, and good luck to you in Arizona. Thank you, Andre. I would like to congratulate the Chargers and the Spanos family for a great game. They're great competitors, and we thank them very much. Now to all you fans, 18 and 0. I'm so happy we could win this at home with all of you. It's a great credit to our players and Coach Belichick and his staff that did what never has been done before. Thank you for your support. Why don't you hand that trophy over to Coach Bill Belichick this remarkable season. Coach, congratulations. This was a hard-fought game today. What did you feel was the difference in the end? I thought it was a difference in this game was the players. All the credit goes to the players. These guys played great. They played great all year, and they played great today. I'm, I'm really lucky to coach this team. Coach, like Mr. Kraft said, to be able to win this right here at home, and this whole season, you never look beyond any given week. But to have it 18 and 0 going to the Super Bowl, congratulations! This really has been special. Thanks, Jim. Now, now we can look ahead. Yeah, now you look ahead. <laughs> All the best. Thank you. Thank you, as always. Ladies and gentlemen, the most valuable player of the National Football League, Tom Brady, going back to the Super Bowl. Tom, at the end of this game.
And San Diego played so tough today. When you guys had to do it, those last two drives were really special. Tell me about them. Well, I think uh, there's, there's special guys on this team that have stepped up all season when we needed to. And we've been down late in games, and I think last drive really signified what this team's all about. And the defense played great. Uh, held them to, to just kick field goals in the red area. And Kevin Falk making those uh, NFL plays of the week on, uh, on those third down plays. So it was great. Falk and Maroney, very special performances. How about them both? Well, they're two great backs, and we've been dependent on them all season. The way the offensive line played, um, it's difficult to stop. So uh, our goals are still ahead of us, but we're always happy to, uh, to hold this trophy up. And uh, now we're going to someplace warm because freezing my you-know-what off. <laughs> yes, we all are. Tom Brady, congratulations. Junior Seau. And Lawrence Maroney. Boy, you ripped it up in that second half, Lawrence. Tell me about that. Well, I got to get first to give a credit to the offensive line and the receivers. They did good blocking, and um, I just ran with, for the open holes. You know, Junior, talking to you a couple of days ago, this was such a special matchup. You talked about destiny and fate. Here you were playing against your hometown team, San Diego. You had all this emotion in your eyes just about the fact that you were going to be out here today. Now that you have this in your hands, tell me what you're feeling. Well, first off, I'd like to say hi to my hometown, San Diego, and congratulations to the San Diego Chargers. Um, but for the most part, it, it really hasn't sunk in. You know, and... What we're going to do now, we're going to embrace this, and now we have a chance, a chance to be part of ever. How about a comment, you two, about Coach Belichick? We're going to show you a shot of him right here and what he's meant to this team this season. There you are, Junior. There you are, Junior. Well, Bill is definitely the best coach ever. All right, we're just... But the best, the best thing that we're going to do now, we're, we're, we're going to go back to work and play it one day at a time and know that these Bostonians deserve everything they're receiving. Well said. Congratulations, guys. They're heading to Arizona at Super Bowl 42. The Lamar Hunt Trophy is back in New England's hands again. And we'll continue with the Subway Post Game Show on CBS in a moment.